Good morning, I'm Jean Kiefer, I'm the developer of PyFi, and I will present you today how to perform the calibration of an experimental setup. For this, I will, uh, I will share, share my screen. So here we have an image which is called Iger4M, uh, uh, aluminum oxi oxide at 13.45 keV. I can, for example, open this file with select view, and I can see that they are nice Dubai Scherer rings on an image acquired with an Iger uh, detector, which is composed of different modules. And uh, we see here the gaps between the module with a very high value. So to perform the calibration, we will use the, the PyFi Calib2 tool that I will just launch by double clicking here. So this tool, is composed, it's a graphical user interface. So we have three, three different panels. So the left, leftmost uh, panel is uh, composed with the different uh, tasks to be performed, uh, assembled in, in tabs, we'll see. The central panel is um, for displaying the image. It's the, the, the largest one. And the rightmost uh, panel is for giving some extra parameters. So the steps to perform the, the, the calibration is first define some experiment setting, then mask out pixel, perform the pick picking, the geometry fitting, and finally perform the integration and save the result. You can always ask um, access to the help by clicking on this button that will open the help directly on the, the, the page. Um, so to load the image, we can, for example, drag and drop the image to the image file button here. So the image is opened automatically and we can register the energy. So 13.45 and the wavelength is calculated automatically. The calibrant is available from this pull down menu and the detector can be chosen. We can select the manufacturer and the model. Most of the detectors are available via this pull down menu. You can also do some manual definition of detector if you wish. So let's maximize the, the image. Here we have the, the, the control button from, from Silex, which allows us, for example, to, uh, to change the aspect ratio of the image to uh, change the position of the origin, which is at the, the lower left of the, of the image, or change the color map, for example, with the normalization pattern. When we switch to next, we, are we arrive to the mask tab, which is here to uh, basically draw the mask. So we will first uh, zoom to the, to the beam stop region. So here I've zoomed to the beam stop region. So the idea of this task is to draw, uh, to mask out all pixels which are not valid. So we have different tools available here. Uh, you, we, we can, for example, draw rectangular section. That's not very convenient. So we have here um, uh, a tool to draw circles or ellipses, which can be used, for example, to mask out the central part here of the, of the, the, the actual beam stop. And the most useful tool, I think, is uh, the polygon selection tool here. So this allows us to draw a polygon. So when we click first on the image, we see a small square appearing. It's the position of the first point. Then we can just go on drawing the, the, the polygon. And once we are finished with it, we go back to this first point and we click back on the on this first point, and this will finish the selection of the polygon. So if we zoom back, we have a nice drawing of the of the the, the, the beam stop. Because the detector is known to PyFi, uh, PyFi knows where the gaps are, so the the default uh, pixel from the mask is already uh, is already masked out. 
we can use uh, some uh, threshold also to mask out some pixels. So we can uh, mask pixel below a certain level or within a certain range or above a certain level. And we still have pixel with a very high intensity that we would, we would like to mask out. So for example, we can threshold any pixel, remove any pixel above than 4 million. And this will mask out all those defective pixel in the image. So once the mask is uh, drawn and we are happy with it, we can switch to next. If we want to save the mask, we have a button here to save the mask to a file. The next task is to assign each ring that we see here to a ring number. So we have multiple tools available to pick one peak or continuous region of peaks. And the idea is just to select the first ring, the first visible ring, and to click on it. And this extract a certain number of points on this ring, which is automatically labeled as ring number one. So this is why we started with the innermost ring, which is ring number one. And though now we go on the second ring and we pick an, another, another set of points, which is ring number two. And with those two clicks, we have uh, enough information. So we have 36, 36 points in the first uh, ring, 42 in the, in the second. And basically this, we have enough information to uh, determine the geometry with this. So we'll get a rough geometry, but it should be not that bad. So PyFi is calculating. And now we, ha we can see overlaid the, the ring with the expected ring position. So you can see it's not that bad. <coughs> One may want to tune some parameter. For example, here we have the detector which is mounted orthogonal to the, to the incident beam. So uh, usually we'd like to have rotation one, two, and three set to zero. So this can be done by using the SACS constraints by pressing this button, we have all three values set to zero. And we can see here that the, the lock has been closed saying that those parameters are now fixed like the, the wavelengths. And we can fit again to get a better matching. So we have the same matching back again. So we can also, um, for example, change the parameter we want to display for the units, for example, centimeters or millimeters. We can, for the wavelengths, we can switch to energy mode, which will be a, a 13 keV. And um, other thing, we may want to, to create some additional constraints. For example, we can uh, limit the, the position of the pony between, uh, let's say, uh, zero and, uh, and 100. By doing like this, we have added some extra constraints because 96 is within the range, it will not change anything. But this is already interesting to see. At this stage, uh, we have performed the calibration using only two clicks. And if we go to the, to the cake, we see that, well, it almost, it's already looks not, not that bad. So what we can do is go back to the pick picking and now extract all information available from this image. By this, we can do this by extracting all reachable rings. So this is obtained with this pull down menu and then just click on extract all reachable rings and it will extract all picks which are now known and select some point on them. And once this is done, we can refine all those parameters and we can now unlock, for example, the tilt and fit again. So we can see that the, the values for the tilts are pretty small, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 degrees. And it can be interesting to visualize the in 3D, what the experiment looks like. So this can be done using this 3D button 
like this. And if we move here, so we can see here the sample, the incident beam, which goes to the beam stop, and we can see the different device shower rings. So if you do not understand what is going on, this 3D visualization so sometimes helps you to understand that your sample has been guessed um, behind the detector or uh, completely sideways and may help you to understand what's going on. Um, so with this, we have a pretty good calibration. We could uh, uh, lock or unlock uh, whatever parameter we want. And now the last step is to perform the integration. So we can see that if we zoom onto the first ring that we have a fairly bad description of the peak. And this can be improved by changing the number of radial points, for example, to 4,000. And this will re-perform the integration and we can see again the, the peaks which, which gets uh, with a better shape. We can zoom onto the the last peak and we can see that it's fairly straight so for example we could be interested in sorry if we zoom here we have a small glitch Or here we have a glitch which comes from those those region. It could be interesting to find where those peaks come from. And for example, we could mark the pixel coordinate here and here, and then go back to the to the mask region. And if we zoom at this position, we can see that we have some, some region with high intensity that we wish to mask using the pencil tool, like this. And for example, with the pencil tool, with blue. Okay, and once this is done, we have masked out those region. And if we go back to the cake integration, we can see that those pixels have disappeared. And now the, the, the obtained spectrum is much flatter and much cleaner. So we have also a region here that we can again mark, find, Mask with something like this, and now it has disappeared. Okay, uh, with this, I'd like to show you one last thing. For example, you can tune also the pixel splitting scheme. For example, you can uh, select for a more precise splitting scheme which should give you slightly sharper peaks, but the sharpest peaks are obtained without any pixel splitting. So this is obtained like this. We see that the peaks are very sharp. The drawback of this method is that when we zoom out, we see a moiré pattern here, which is clearly visible and most people don't want to see it. So if you want precise pixel position, precise peak position, you have to suffer to suffer this more pattern. But the great thing is that you can tune 
by uh, and, and select if you want to, to use the pixel splitting or not. So the last thing we can do is, for example, save the, the pattern. So we can so save integrated directly on the desktop and also save on the desktop the geometry. Okay, so that's it with this, this uh, application. Uh, we can now close. And now we have this geometry.pony file that has been created. I will open it with, uh, for example, mousepad. So this is a very simple text file that contains, uh, well, when the calibration was performed, uh, what the detector was, the distance, the pony position, the different rotation, and the wavelengths used. So it's very simple if you want to re reuse it. And the integrated data are directly, so we have two theta intensity and we have the values uh, to theta intensity. So this can be plot uh, within uh, the tool you like. You can even use Excel if you wish. With this, I thank you for your, your attention and I, I wish you uh, um, a fruitful uh, experiment calibration and integration.